Hi, it's Payam here from Niche. Right, let's talk about Buy to Let. Buy to Let Limited Company, Buy to Let Purchases, Refinances, how the market is dictating what's going to happen in the future to the Buy to Let sector. There are some huge pressures in the Buy to Let sector that was going to have a profound impact on you, the borrower, um, whether you're a, a you know, first time landlord, next time landlord, or portfolio landlord. These changes that are happening to the sector will have a massive impact certainly for the next few years for you and we look at the funding we look at the challenges in the market why people are not being able to get access to decent products what's going to happen if things do not change to the market there are some dangers that are going to come up here so let's talk about it let me try to explain and give you the inside track of what i'm seeing and it is my own personal views um you know i may be wrong but I'm going to talk about it right now. What's going on with the buy to let sector? Because I think it's going beyond below the radar. What you found, or what I found in the last month, is buy to let. Uh, limited company as well as normal buy to let but specifically limited companies becoming harder to get now why is it harder to get it's because um, there was a little quick win with buy to let so there was a two-year fix and there was a five-year fixed and the way you worked out the rental calculation on a five-year fixed always meant that you could or pretty, pretty much with all lenders meant that you could borrow more on a five-year fixed okay so if you went even to a high street buy to let lender they would allow you to borrow more. There was a nominal rate of, I don't know, four and a half percent or something. They used to stress this that based on that. And then if you were really adventurous or you wanted to do a limited company or you wanted to do a, a non-standard lender, say you had a property in central London, the rental yields were not that great, you would go to uh, lenders um, like Precise, like Kent Reliance, a specialist lenders that would allow you to borrow a lot more than the high street Okay, on a five-year fix. The way they did that was they said, look, if you go for a five-year fix, we will stress test it at the pay rate. What that means is we're not going to use a nominal interest rate of 5.5% or 5% or 4.5%. We will do it at the rate that you're actually going to be paying. We'll stress test that at that. So if you had a mortgage at 3%, it will get stressed as that 3%, which meant the calculations were being done on 3% rather than 5.5%, which meant you could borrow more. Great, that worked. That worked for central London. It worked for a lot of low-yielding properties. So you could go. Yes, they would charge you more. Yes, there was a higher lending fee. Yes, there were other fees around it. However, you could borrow what you wanted. Okay. So what's happened now is with interest rates going up, those lenders pay rates are actually now almost higher than the high streets four and a half percent or five percent you know we've seen pay rates of you know at least four and a half five percent on the limited company four between four to five on the limited company transact sometimes more six seven so that tool has gone away so what you've got is you've got these huge sort of lenders now that are sitting with thousands of people on their books thinking oh we only have them for a couple of years and then they'll remortgage away worst case scenario it'll be five years after five years they're off ski okay however they're looking at this book now and they're thinking god these people can't go anywhere they're going to be stuck with us we can give them a, a new product transfer however we're not going to shift these people because if they have to go elsewhere the rental calculations don't fit so you've got a whole load of people at the moment that are going to be sitting with these specialist lenders that are not necessarily geared up to hold so much of the mortgages because essentially what they wanted to do is get them in make some money get them away get them away off their books so what's happened now is we've seen some lenders now that's my own theory it, it could be different reasons right but you've got some lenders like precise like kent reliance that are you know quite big specialist lenders withdrawing their five-year fixes well uh, uh, on Ken Reliance certainly on um, on precise they withdrew their uh, limited company five-year fixes so that that paints a picture of what's going on so you've got specialist lenders that have got a lot of people that can't necessarily go anywhere now you could see it in two folds you can say well actually 
the price of transacting in terms of marketing and paying people to get that business there's no need because they've got this book already and this book can't go anywhere but as a lender that's a big risk you've got a whole load of people they can't go anywhere if they struggle they can't go anywhere if they want more money they can't go anywhere so that's going to have an impact later down the line so there are going to be opportunities within this market because you're going to have landlords with low yielding properties with their mortgage borrowing costs going higher and higher there's only a certain amount of costs they can pass on to the to the tenants so there's going to be uh, uh, issues there now whether or not those landlords decide to sell up will be interesting um, because we have seen institutional money uh, and big corporations essentially coming into the UK property market and we're going to see a lot more of that you only have to look at the states and you're seeing big corporations coming in so the small landlords are going to be under pressure. However, the small landlords can actually also react to this market. They can take opportunity of this market. They can look at um, where uh, there is oversupply uh, and they, you know, they, they, there's going to be shifts and this market is going to be, it's going to have some winners, it's going to have some losers. I think the winners are going to be the people that are lowly geared, that have got some money in the bank, that can withstand this, I think, couple of years worth of pressure and I think they will come out of it on the other end stronger and you can be able to utilize the opportunities that come about okay they're going to be people that are looking to buy I've got clients that are sitting here and people are saying well we can't make money no there are lots of people still looking to buy okay and that's why I don't think the property market's going to go pop I don't think there's going to be a huge crash although we have seen indications that the property prices are going to come down yes to an extent but there are still lots of people waiting on the sidelines whether they're first time buyers next time buyers or investors looking to buy but what i'm saying is those people that are heavily geared right are now going to find it quite difficult going through i've got people that have got 12 15 properties that have never ever had a problem with their rental calculations they've never had a problem with their gearing on their properties uh, they're relatively low gearing however the rental yields are not that good so they can't refinance or they can't buy other properties okay so there will be some movement i think um there needs to be a, a look at how lenders are lending their money so the pra uh, i think there will need to be some adjustments made because these specialist lenders are just not very competitive right now and it's going to get worse and worse and historically specialist lenders came out of the market of credit issues self-employment you know the self-cert mortgage you know there were problems with the property um, so that's where you went to the specialist guys however specialist lending has become normal you know a lot a great proportion of purchases into a buy to let are being done under a limited company okay if those lenders are uncompetitive and can't make things work that's going to damage the market so i think there will be find there will be some adjustments made on rental calculations they've got to fudge it somehow in regards to list trust stamp duty um yeah i think yeah, there's two school of thoughts there are you going to just feed this bubble okay is it worth feeding this bubble i think the uk economy is um reliant so much on property prices and people feeling they their properties are worth what they're worth and feeling rich and feeling wealthy um that the government and this we, we had this last time around the government is always going to try to stabilize the market they've obviously seen some scenes that the market's slowing down they want to do something to give that good feeling because the worst thing they want is the property market taking a big hit so i think they will do i mean i think it's going to be drastic i think they will try to help because on the other side the interest rates will start biting in um, but i think they will have to do something in regards to the rules around lending um, because ultimately it's no point you having stamp duty if the rental calculations don't work if you're a landlord it's no point having a stamp duty if your affordability does not work because of the way affordability works so there will need to be tweaks and adjustments made to the market if they want the market to continue to do what it's doing or have a soft landing rather than a big sort of uh, a drop in prices uh, and I don't think the government will allow for that to happen I think it will be disastrous for the economy 
if the property the content of this video really does not constitute giving so, advice um, it's let's purely for information purposes really all cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker as a mortgage is secured against your home all property it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments niche advice is authorized and regulated by the financial conduct authority and the buy to let market rental calculation adjustments with lending criteria for first-time buyers as well as landlords i think they they're going to have to come into play otherwise we're going to see some problems ahead take care all the best